Now, I'm going to be showing you this fly here. Now, this is a, a variant of a well-known New Zealand fly. It's called the Craig's Nightmare or Nighttime fly. It's basically a, it's a wee lure type fly fished uh, at night time, which gives the impression of a small fish. It could be fished both in the rivers and the lochs, but this is a variant. This is a fly that I tied uh, for a boy a couple of years ago and it's come back for some more. I mean, I, I've been tying a lot of other patterns. The uh, New Zealand style are a bit different for ourselves. The dry flies are quite close, uh, doing small matuka type muddlers. I've tying a fly called uh, a beetle pattern called the Manuka. It's another type of fly I've been tying. And I've uh, obviously been tying some dries. Now, I'm going to show you this fly. This is it's reasonably simple to tie. Uh, I'm using a this is a size 10, it's actually a bomber hook. Uh, it's a nice wire, it's a nice it's a long shank style hook, so uh, ideal for a kind of small lure. Thread I'm going to be using is the uni thread in black. Just gonna run the wax through it to get it started. And I'm start at the eye, put down a layer of thread along the shank. Just all the way along. It just obviously makes everything steady and strong if you put a layer of thread on the shank. It's no it'll not roll on you. Especially what I'm gonna be doing here is tying in some red wool for the tail. This is just basic red wool. Uh, there was three strands in this I tied one out for the size of the fly. Now, I always like to go back up and wind on to the tail. Now you when you stop about say three or so mil from the eye and then work my way back down. Just gonna tidy this end up first. Tying in the wheel, what you can do is, is you tie it in the way down. Obviously, you're forming, help to form a taper in the body in some way, or thicken it up. But as well, what I like to do is twist it open, and then wind down. I'm going to come slightly around the bend, just a wee bit. So it dips below the shank of the hook. Trim it about, say, uh, around about a third of the way. Just slightly more. Then get a brush. Brush it out. Gives you a nice fluffy tail, as they say. The rib of the fly, I'm just going to use a small oval silver tinsel. You can use a flat tinsel if you want. Again, I'm just going to pull the end of the body, but I'm going to take the thread back up, back down. I know it looks like a bit of waste, but we'll sort it out in the way back down. Just for the body, normally you would use uh, chenille dyed black, black chenille. But I'm going to use dyed black peacock kettle. I see it's just a variant. It's one I tied. It did well, so you can't go wrong with these materials. So. Run it down to the tail and then come back up. You need at least four, five strands of the peacock kettle so that you can get all the way up the shank. Now I'm winding towards myself, uh, just basically so that when I wind the rib up, it catches in more of the hair and protects it. All the way up to this point, you come across the hair with a turn and a turn on the hook, which locks it in. Do the same again, do it two or three times, and then trim away. Then we can bring the rib up through. Looking round, six or so turns. Just follow up with the thread on the last turn, secure in. And don't be shy with the head of this fly, as I say, this represents a small fish. Small fish have big heads, so tidy that area up. See how things are looking. That's fine. Give me a bit of tape on the body there. Now, what I used on some of the original uh, flies that I tied uh, the Craig's Nightmare was this is cut body uh, feather. It's kind of dark grey. It's as close as we've got to. Uh, 
the type of feathers they use for this fly down New Zealand. We just can't get the feathers they use. But what I did was I laid on some, this is a peacock neck feather, uh, which has got the blue on it and I, I put it on the top just to get the colour. You're looking for the tips, just you can either before the tail or slightly by it, it's entirely up to yourself. You're looking for some sort of taper anyway, so I'm looking at the length I want and then just I'm making a wee space for it. I don't mind tying on to some of the fibres because of the stems, it helps to control the stems of the feathers. So you can see like I'm going to be tying on some of the fibres by a pull it. This helps hold them, you see. Uh, looking at the length again, that's fine. Nice and flat. You want it flat on top. We want two or three turns. Just basically to hold it at this point and then see how they're sitting. That's, that's fine. That's fine because this will pull in and it'll, you'll get a, a nice tapered shape a lot of movement in it. Now when you're happy you can then take your thread down towards the eye trim away the waist. Now having the extra fibres in here acts like a small cushion which forms round about the stem of the feather and holds it and uh, stops it basically twisting, rotating. Take the thread back up, ready for our for our, our hackle and I'm going to use a black hen. Just a Chinese hen. Just use one of the larger feathers. Tie it in by the tip. And with the good side of the feather facing myself, two or three turns down, fold back the tip, tidy up, just draw your fingers back and there's a the tip there we can break that off. Now you to run the scissors on one edge of the, the hackle, which will run the leading edge which then folds it back. Now you're looking to get nice straight turns, one in front of the other, wind form a nice hackle. When you're happy, follow it up. I usually put a bend into the stem and 90 degrees, which allows you to get the thread right onto the stem of the feather. Then we can trim this away. And then tidy the head area up. A nice head. See how things are looking. That's fine. See that nice, nice shape. Jungle cock eyes, two small jungle cock eyes. Now, I'm going to put them both on at the same time as I like to do it. You can put them on individually if you want. in from the top, when them along the side of the, the body of the, the hook, you want two or three turns down, check the length, look from the top down, Just make sure they're the same length, this one's slightly longer, that looks okay. Now thread towards the eye, now what we can do is tuck these back, these stems, Fold them back and then tidy up, make for a nice head and strong. The jungle cock will never, obviously will never pull out, it's got to break off. You can break these away, keep the thread tight when you do that. Looks okay for me, yeah. A wee bit of flash, it's going to highlight the head. A bit of pearl. This is just mirror, mirror flash that I've got sitting. It's a nice blue. Just catch you on the side with two or three turns. You want a couple of turns at the head. Come up with the thread. I usually wind the thread towards the eye. You can trim this away. Remember when you wind that on, you're not wind it, winding it onto hold something, you're just winding on for colour. 
you'll secure it in with the varnish. Just tidy the head area up. Put it finish. Check that side. That's fine. Draw your thread. Take a quick look, see how it's in. That looks okay. And then what I'm going to do, for speed what I like to do is super glue this one first. Touch the head all the way around. See how that looks. And there we are. And that's the variant of Craig's Nightmare or Nighttime Fly. A nice pattern. Uh, I'm sure if we fished it here and we could fish it in any size really, uh, we would do well with it, so I hope you enjoyed that.